for me it's much easier to to talk while I'm standing. It's written on uh, on the generation of Rabban Gamliel that in his generation they were learning Torah Ba'amida. They were learning Torah while they were standing on their feet. So Bigmar is asking what what's the meaning of that? What's the, okay for what? Why why they did it? So there is an, a very deep explanation that actually they were learning Torah in an aspect of prayer, of tefillah. Because it's written, En Amida El Tefillah. When it's written standing, it means praying. Like we're standing, Shmona Esre. What, what are you doing when you're standing? You're praying. Abraham Avinu was going and standing in that place. What he was doing while standing? En Amida El Tefillah. He was praying. It's a prayer. To stand, it's to pray. So, in the generation of Rabban Gamliel, they were learning Torah while standing. It's written in the Torah that it's all names of the Creator. And they were just calling Him in all of His names, in all of the names that are written in the Torah, in the Bible. That's how they were calling Him. And they were inviting Him and calling Him, please come. Every word they had that intention to ask Him to, to join us, to come to sit with us, to learn with us, to be with us, that the Holy Spirit of, 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 of Mashiach, of, of the Torah Kosha, of the Creator, like that it's written, Behi Bare'am, Behi Bare'am means that the thing's been created, and it's written with a small letter He, Behi Bare'am, and the letter He over there is written, in a tiny, in a tiny way, in a small way. All of the letters are in the, in the same size, but the letter hey is smaller than the rest. So they're asking why it's written in small hey, because the Creator, with a small breath of air, of air, a little bit of air, he created the world. He just he had to say only a little hey, like that, little h like that, and. Already everything that there is today, so big and so fantastic and so huge and so complicated and so deep and so endless and, and for the Creator it's just, he was just thinking about it and, and it, it become, it's, it's enough. So, when we understand that we're in the hands of the Creator, except of thanking Him, Except of understanding how, how huge it all is. And the power that we have is really to take it to a different place. Because really today we are we are beyond all of the limitations and all of the constrictions of, of different generations. Because today we can go back to those intentions of learning Torah with the aspect of prayer. Even though that every one of us, when we're checking ourselves, we see that, okay, we're so weak, we're so lost, we're so confused, and there is no way even to argue about it. Even the the, 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 the people that sit and learn Torah all day long, it's like, it's, I'm not trying Chasr Shalom to be disrespectful to the ones that are learning Torah, but you cannot compare it to the real learning of the real righteous people in different generations. It's like it's it's you're talking about something else that 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 people are doing today. Okay, sitting, open books and learning and reading from the books and also maybe understanding some. It's it's great. It's it's it is a good thing that happens, but you cannot really compare it into to to real learning of real righteous people of. 200 years ago, 500 years ago, 800 years ago, we cannot even mention that. If you're going to try even just really to understand who you're talking about, I was learning once from Rav Yoshua Kohen, his name is Rav Yoshua Kohen, he's teaching Gemara, like he, he's a genius in, in Gemara, something wild, he knows everything in the Gemara by heart. And I, when I say everything, it's not the sugiot, not the verses, the lines that are written. He can tell you how many times you have the letter Vav before of letter Kaf in that chapter. 
like you know we're talking about someone phenomenal something unique something like even weird once he said in class I he said I already taught you that sugiya, that part of the Gemara, I already taught you that. But last time that I taught you, it was... Um, I don't even remember what he said, yes? I'm just going to make something like... He said, it was five years ago, and three months, and 17 days, and seven and a half hours, and not all of you were sitting here, just only 21 of you were sitting in the class, but the truth is that only 17 heard the sugiya because four or three were asleep and one I don't want to insult him so I'm not going to tell you what he was doing while I was teaching and then he explained the sugiya so you're talking about the person with a phenomenal memory that knows everything in, in odds he knows how, in odds to tell you how many letters you have here and like every 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 everything so in the in in, in his classes while while he was teaching, so he was he was inspiring us really to understand the, the depths of the Torah. And when you see a person like that, that is such a genius, and you still understand that this is this is a, a genius of our generation. And when he is praising and talking about, so okay, he is a man that can testify that you know. If I'm going to say, and I'm not as strong as him in Gemara, so. What that I'm going to say on the Gemara was well, not going to be as strong as the person that really dedicate every minute of his life for years and years and years to Gemara. We, it's better to go and ask him about the Gemara. He knows more. So you go to an expert, when, when, to, to a professional, when you want to learn something. So when he was describing Abaye Verava, that there are two Tanaim from, from the Gemara, from the righteous people that wrote the Gemara itself, um, Amoraim. So he said that they were not righteous people. They were flames of fire, pillars of fire that came down from heaven to this world, and to one of them we called Abaye, and to the other one we called Rava. And like fire, flaming fire, torches of fire, pillars of fire, something that you. Can you approach? Can you talk to? Can you can you ask him your questions? You, you're terrified. Fire, you know, it's like it can burn your life. So we really cannot compare. So even though that we look at ourselves and we see that we're so weak and we're so broken and we're so scarred and, and wounded and, and it's reality. You barely wake up in the morning, barely pray, barely put your feet in, barely keep Shabbat, barely eat kosher, you're like and you and you want and it's not that you but you can focus all of the time confusions and fears and and, 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 and anxieties and, and like sadnesses and depressions and and and, and 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 needs to go and to run and phones and answers and questions and doubts and, and another conversation and another clarifications and another time to go and to think about and, and okay you half of your life already <laughs> went between the fingers and okay. okay. Let's start again. So that's us, like like domino cubes. It's like every minute everything can fall to, to the sewer and okay, let's start again. That, that's who we really are in this generation. But even though that we are so weak and so confused and so lost, we have something inside of us that is unique and special and beyond the success of other generations because the fact that the Creator chose us and brought us to life in this generation, that it is a generation that even the Tanaim from those early generations, they were crying not to come back in a lifetime to this generation because they knew the fear and the risk of being born to this generation with the power of, of the evil inclinations, right? Yeah, I made it. I'm learning. I said it a few times, I'm the only person in this generation that is learning English, L'Shem Shamayim, only for Hashem. <laughs> so, so, even though that we are 
finding ourselves in that darkness, in that fire, in those confusions, in those fears and stress, but we are still looking for the Creator from that darkness. And why the Tanaim, they didn't want to, born, to come to the world in this generation? Because they were afraid to lose it all, that they're going to sin, that they're going to go to all, or whatever that is open in the middle of the night. So that's, that, from that they were afraid. But us, we've been in those places, and we came out from the place that on that place it's written, Kol everyone that came to that place, he cannot come back. We came from the place that you cannot come back from. Like survivors from, from, from the Holocaust, when they came back to their houses in Hungary, in Poland, after four, five, six years of the Holocaust, they came back to their houses, so the, the, the people that took over their houses, they look at them like aliens. Hey, where you came from? What, if, what do you mean you came back? No one comes back from those places. How, how the hell you came back? You're not supposed to come back. And, and those are us. We came back. And even if we're, we look like, like Holocaust survivors, with all of the, we're hungry, we're thirsty, we're confused, we don't know, we're terrified, yeah, where's my bread, what's going on? I, I, you know, everyone is fighting for his life, for his panasa, for money, we, we're lost, we're confused. But we came back from the exile, from a place that no one comes back from that place. And I'm talking about the Jewish ones, and I'm talking about the converts, I'm talking about everyone that is looking and seeking for the spark of, of, of his life, of, of the essence. What's my, what's the purpose of my life? What am I doing here? What's, what should I do? And, 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 and whatever. All of those questions, it's like, it's beyond real. You're not supposed to think like that. You're supposed to be an outsider. You're supposed to be outside. You're supposed to act just like an animal. You should never seek for Hashem, but you are. So it means that you have a huge power inside of you, a flaming fire that is, 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 is like just shining from inside, something that, that God planted inside of you. It's not you, but it is you. So you are not yourself, you're divine. You have a godly soul inside of you that that soul doesn't know what it means to be afraid, that doesn't know what it means to surrender, doesn't know what it means to give up. We have those souls. We can see it for weeks, for months, for years, and to be terrified, cannot go out to the supermarket from my house, it's just can't go, can't go out, afraid to meet people, afraid to talk, afraid, afraid of everything, and, and like with no reason, just being crazy. And after eating the next day, you're like the, 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 the black knight, going and, and fighting and ignoring everything and no fear in your eyes, and you go and do and change your life from one side to the other. Radical, what's going on? Who are we? That's the secret of lifetimes. That's the secret of the souls that are coming to fix. And we are those souls that God sent us to this generation to make a revolution. And to make a revolution, for that you need a group of crazy people to make a revolution. No, regular, normal people, balanced people will never going to make a revolution. They're going to swim with the stream, We'll be cool, we'll flow, everything is good in the university, in the college, working, 11,000 a month, 15,000 a month, a new car, every leasing, mortgage, quiet, you know, backyard, front yard, great. Come and relax. We, whatever that you're going to offer me, I won't be satisfied. Give me the biggest villa, the biggest house, the most fanciest car. Biggest bank account, like it, it, it won't buy me. It, like it, it's like okay, now let's let's rock. Now let's work. Now, now okay, let's use it to, to to make that revolution. Like it won't satisfy me to have a huge palace with a swimming pool. I'm, I'm probably not gonna swim in it even once. Like maybe if I'll be stuck without a mikveh, so maybe I'm gonna. After the fact, I'm going to try to be a Tzedek Chova with dipping in the swimming pool instead of Mikvah. I'm like, who's got time for those nonsense? And I, I know I'm more crazy a little bit from you, all, all that you're not aware to your craziness all the way. Because I believe in you that you're crazy like me, I do. Maybe you, you, don't, you don't get it yet, but, but you are. If you're here in the middle of the night, Motzei Shabbat, 
huge parties outside. What are you doing here? You know what's going on outside? So many options. <laughs> but you're choosing to look for your soul, to come back to, to the world of beyond, to the spiritual world, to, to eternity, to, to infinity, to find a purpose, a meaning to your life. You're asking questions and you're confronting yourself and you, you're you're doubting everything that you learned until today and, and, and you're refusing to accept what that you've been taught and, and who are you? That's the question. And everyone needs to go with that question and first of all to be happy that I'm asking. First of all, thank you Hashem that you gave me the power to ask, to be a truth seeker, that I'm seeking for the truth, that I'm searching, that I'm, I'm, I'm looking, that I'm, I'm searching. First of all. Just understand who you are, that you have that flaming fire inside of you that is not that is not normal at all, that is unique, that is so special. Seeking for a purpose, for a meaning, and what's the truth? I was crazy for the truth. When I started my tshuva, and again, it's so powerful, it's so powerful. Shalom Aleichem. Sorry, it's a long drive for us. It's a, it's a, it's going to be a long class to to pay back for your long drive. It's all right. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Thank you, Achim. Welcome. Thank you. So, as people that are coming from long distance to search for the truth, first step is to be proud of ourselves and to be happy that He put our destiny in a different place, not like theirs, not like all of the people that today they still think that they can be satisfied from a funny show in the television or whatever because that's not the truth, it's not really satisfying. In the end of the day you look at yourself and you find emptiness and loneliness and confusions and like, what am I doing here? So regular people, it's not waking them up but you feel that pain in the back, that, that pinch that doesn't let go, that asks you from inside all of the time, who am I? What's the purpose of my life? So first of all the fact, just that fact that we have that yearn inside of us, that holy desire to find the purpose, to find the truth. From that we can understand how important we are in the eyes of the Creator. Because we are Dayat Tzrenu. He knows exactly how hard it is for us to serve. He knows exactly how complex it is to serve Hashem in this generation. How hard and complex and confusing it is and how cold it is outside and how dark it is outside and how dangerous it is outside. And still, we are choosing to risk ourselves and to go against our families, against our companies, all of our friends, and against people that have wars inside of their houses, and arguments, and conversations, and crying, and tears, into the night. No, but I know it's there, I know there is something, I know I must reach it, I must find it. That yearn inside of you, that, 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 that desire to find the truth, this is something that we must appreciate. And that is your real self. That is your real self. This is who that you really are. And we must give the power and, and, and strength to that point inside of ourselves. Because only with that power we can achieve big things. Because only big people can achieve big things. And small people will achieve small things. If you see that you have a strong point inside of you, you need to, 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 to nurture that point. You need to put more light on that point. You need to focus. You need to, to clean it. Like, let's say you found a, a, an amazing diamond today. So, you, 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 oh, wow, it's worth a few hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay, I'm going to put it here in that drawer. No way. You're gonna clean it, and gonna brush it, and gonna look at it in the light, in the shade, under this lamp, under that lamp. You're gonna show it, you're gonna... Oh, kol ayom misichati, all day long you're gonna... Oh, you don't know what I found, you're gonna hold it, and you're gonna switch hands, and no, I'm, and you're gonna find a nice, nice 
a, a silk is a fabric, something soft and nice to wrap it, to put it, and then you look at a fancy box, something with a good lock that you're gonna, you're gonna. Why? Because it's so precious. But your soul is much more precious. And to respect it, it's first of all to care about it. So for that, first you need to recognize it. You need to understand what is the importance of your soul. Because your body is a rack. Your body is nothing. It's worthless. Only Hashem in Barach is helping your, your car to drive you. It's like it's, it's, it's a rack. It's a total loss. It's nothing. It's, it's a dead piece of, of, of earth. Just Hashem gives it life so it works. Okay, so thank God that you woke me up again. Because really you, you cannot wake up. Only Hashem is Pukeh Ivrim, Metir Asurim, Alvish Arumim, Mechayem Metim. The body is dead. The body is gone. Already. It's like, you know that a person can lose his life in a second, in a moment. Like, that's it. He already died. Like, before we mentioned his name, he's already gone. But the soul is eternal. And you have two things that you hold. One is eternal, one is spiritual, one is divine, one is chelek elokam imal. It's part of Hashem. It's neshama elokit. Part of God that you received and it's in your hands. And in the other hand, okay, you're tall, you're, you're I don't know what you are. You're strong, you're powerful, you're very talented, you're very gifted, yeah, you, you can run fast, okay. But you cannot compare those two things, a physical thing to an eternal thing, a limited thing to an unlimited thing. You cannot compare those two. So we need to look at the good points that we have inside of ourselves and to understand that they are not good points. It's a spring of wisdom. It's a source of power. It's a, ten, a channel to, to, to a source of, of, of wisdom that, that is endless. And the righteous people and the spiritual people, they found that source inside of themselves and they revealed it. First of all, uncovered it and then worked with it. And they put all of their power into the prayer. And they put all of their powers into learning Torah. And they put all of their power to go and, and, and rescue people in danger and to give charity beyond their powers. The Creator, he's saying to the Prophet, to the judge of, of Israel, his name was Gid'on, he's telling him, go, lech, bekochachaze, with your power, with that power of yours, he's telling him. Which power? We're talking about... I'm sorry to, for, on, for the expression, but he told him, go with your craziness, go with, with who that you are. Go with who that you are, with your power. With, with, like, because he was a warrior, he was a very powerful person, he was a hero, he was a strong man. And, and okay, now he become to be a prophet and Hashem tells him, go with your power. Which power? With your own power. We immediately judging ourselves and saying, no, I cannot compare myself to Gidon. You know who Gidon was? No, no, no. You think that Gidon was who that Gidon was in the end of his life. That he been, been, that they wrote on him in the Torah and in the Nevi'im. Okay, now the, no, he was a huge righteous man. He was a leader of our nation. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you're going to be in 20 years? Do you know what's your job in, in this world? Do you really know that you're worse than some other righteous man that today he's so... Do you really know who you are? Maybe the redemption is in your hand and you don't know that. Maybe you're the one that holds the password, the key for the redemption, and you're not aware to yourself. You don't understand that it's under your nose. Maybe you have the ability to reach out to millions or billions of people and, and, to, and to help them to switch from lie to truth. Maybe you have that power inside of you, in soul, you've been programmed to bring the Geula, and you're not aware to that at all. You just, oh no, I'm hungry, oh no, I'm thirsty, oh I'm so upset, I'm so confused. And you know, you're not, you, you know, don't, you're not using your, your vessels, your tools. And you're a genius, you're a genius in computers. So, hey brother, you know what you can do in the world? No, oh, I'm trying to make some money. Okay, <laughs> keep on, you know. Call you later, when you're going to wake up. We're going to try to wake you up, and, and until then, we're waiting. But 
you're waiting for the redemption of Hashem, for the salvation of Hashem, Hashem needs to be saved, not us. Us, even though that we're suffering, even though that we're going through a hard life and not so simple, we live. Only Hashem in Barach is suffering 24-7. Only Hashem in Barach. He's crying always. He's suffering always. Why? Because Bechol Tzaratam Lo Tzar. He sees all of our sorrow and he cannot satisfy himself in anything because he doesn't have no lusts and no desires and he never goes to sleep and he never eats a good meal and forget. He never drinks no beer, no vodka. He doesn't do no drugs. He, can't, he cannot run away from his trouble. He cannot drink a good whiskey, Lichvot Shabbat Kodesh. No, he cannot. He's always awake. He's always with us. He sees the sorrow, all of our confusions, and he suffers more than us. Because us, okay, when you're afraid, when you're angry, when you, when you suffer, when you don't know what to do with yourself, you run away from your troubles. Even if once in a while you dig and you investigate and you find and you confront yourself and you work hard and you do tshuva, great, but not always you put all of your power on dealing and suffering the pain that you feel, the loss that you feel. And most of the time you're also not even aware to, to how far you are and how, how, how deep is your sorrow and your trauma. And your, why? Because you're busy, because you're running, because you need to make sure that you're going to look good, that you're going to eat, that you're going to have power, because you're, distract, you're, you're distracting your thoughts from, from, from the pain. But the Creator, He doesn't have that privilege. He is inside of our souls. Asuli mishkan veshachanti betocham. He opened the place inside of our hearts and He lives inside of us. And He sees everything from inside. And He feels our sorrow even more than how we feel our sorrow. And only when we are being redeemed, so we're redeeming Him with us. Only when you're happy, so He's happy. But when you're sad, He's sad. Okay, so you said, and you feel the sorrow of your sadness. And your friend, he feels the sorrow of his own loss, but not... He cannot feel your sorrow in 100% because you're divided and it's healthy for him. Because he, if he would feel also your sorrow and also his, he wouldn't stand in all of that sorrow. But the Creator, that he's beyond all of the limitations and all of the dividings of this world, he feels the loss of all of us. He feels the exile of all of us. He feels the pain and the sorrow of each and every one of us. And he's inside of us and he hears the sorrow. And he hears it in an eternal way that the screams and the cries and the tears and, 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 and the yearning and, and all of the, 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 the pain for him is, is eternal. The people that been murdered 500 years ago are still screaming in his ears. He, he, he hears them forever. So we need to do something big for the Creator himself and to bring the redemption. And to stop, have those horrible self-pity on ourselves and, no, oh, you don't know, I'm suffering so much. You're not suffering. You just used to be lazy and to, and, and to drown inside of your sadnesses and your sorrow. But if there's something important, really, suddenly you woke up and you have a purpose to your life, so then you're not sad at all. Suddenly you have energy, oh amazing, beautiful woman just called you and you want to get married and now you're not lazy anymore and you're all fresh and the lion woke up in your bed. Why? Why? Because you have a purpose. Now I'm going to get married. Yes, probably it's my... Okay. Now there is a huge deal. Someone is offering you now to open something. Oh, you can make millions in, in one year. You don't know. Your life will be changed forever. Okay. Are you lazy? No. Are you drinking? No. Smoking? No. No way! You're barely keeping Shabbos from you're so excited. So, of course, lust and desires are not an option. You don't have time for what? There's a huge business, huge opportunity. You're flying to Berlin and back. And no, why? Why? Because you know that you need to achieve it. So if really the Creator would be so important for us, if our souls, the souls of Israel, the Bible, the Torah, Dosha, whatever, would be important for us, you wouldn't sleep. This is how the righteous people could learn for years and years. Rabbi Akiva, you think that he was like us today in Beit Midrash, sitting, snoring, coffee, in cafeteria, sandwiches, yeah, <laughs> with pastries. What? No, Rabbi Akiva, no way. 
<laughs> Why? Because he really desired the Torah 100% and he didn't want anything else. Like the story in Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus. Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus, he wanted to learn Torah. And after that he achieved Torah, it's a long story, a deep story, but after a while he achieved the Torah, he learned Torah, he learned Torah from the, from the, the prince of, 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 of Am Israel, Rabbi, Rabbi Yochanan, and, and he learned Torah from him, and okay, he became to be a, a, a lighthouse, a, a pillar of fire. He spoke Torah, that it's written on him, that he spoke Torah, that was in the second level after the Torah that Moshe Rabbeinu said when he went down from Mount Sinai. And we're talking about Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus, that he was a Baal Tshuva. That he started to learn the Aleph Bet, he started to learn how to say Kriyat Shema and Birkat Amazon when he was 27 years old. Until the age of, age of 27, he didn't know how to learn Torah. He didn't know how to say Kriyat Shema. 27 years old. And after a few years, he gave Torah like the Torah that Moshe said when he went down from Mount Sinai. People couldn't look at him while he was saying Torah. And then his father, Hulkanos, that he was one of the most richest people in that generation, came to him and told him, I, I want now to give you all of the money that I have. He was so impressed from his son that he decided not to give the share, the rest of the share of his money to the brother, to the rest of the brothers, and he decided to give it all to him because he was so proud of him. So his son, Rabbi Eliezer, told him, Father, if I would want money, the Creator would give me money. But I wanted Torah. So the Creator gave me Torah. It's not a story on Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkinus. Why the Torah is bothering to tell you that a person that was 27 years old when he started, that he was bachelor, that he was not married, didn't have children, and he chose to stop plowing, stop working, stop sweating, and dedicating his life to the Torah, and he had to went and to move to Jerusalem and to learn Torah from the righteous people of Jerusalem, and he was not eating, and why the Torah is bothering? Why the Gemara is bothering? Why the Midrashim are telling you that story? That we gonna idolize Eliezer ben Orkanus? No, there's no use in that. When people are going and idolizing a man, you see that doesn't bring them nowhere. Nothing comes out from idolizing a person. From our rabbis, from the righteous people, we learn how to fix ourselves, how to work on our midot, how to be like them. When my actions will become like the actions of my ancestors, of my rabbis, I'm asking myself. We must we must learn from them how to fix ourselves. And not just to idolize them. Oh no, that was Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus. Wow, yeah, he was so great. No, no, no. That's not the story. You didn't get the message, the lesson. The real lesson is that you can become exactly like Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus. Why? Because what's the difference between you to Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus? Only your awakeness. Only your desire. That's the only difference. Because from an apple tree, only apples are growing. And if you, in any way, part of that tree, so you're an apple. And that's it. And you're an apple. And the apples were always going to stay apples. They're not changing. And you're an apple. And you have a son. You're a son of 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 Abraham Avinu. And, and like, just face it. You can become like Abraham Avinu. And how Avraham Avinu became to be Avraham Avinu? He was searching. He was yearning. He was going. He was asking. He was crying. He was begging. And he was putting his heart into that Avodah, into the effort. He desired to sacrifice himself and to give himself over to the Creator, even after being rebuked so many times by the Creator. But he loved the rebuke because he wanted to learn. And he couldn't care less about the insultings and the shame. Why? Because he wanted to know. And he was yearning for knowledge. He wanted to come closer to the Creator. And he was ready to sacrifice everything for that. And we can achieve the same in this generation. Why? And I told you that in the beginning of this class. Because we have that flame of fire inside of us that nothing can turn it off. Nothing can turn us off because that flame of fire is who that we are. And only death can take that soul away from you. Only death can take that soul back to Hashem. 
But when you're still alive, it's only that you're distracted, that you cannot feel the flame of fire that is inside of you. But if you're going to look inside and you're going to find that soul, that's it. It's the end of the story. Yetzirah, he cannot trick you anymore. The power of imagination cannot affect you anymore. Because on everything that he will tell you, you can say, who cares? I'm continuing doing my job. Oh, but you're not righteous. Okay, but who cares? I'm not here to be righteous. Oh, no, but you're not learning to walk. Okay, but I'm doing other things. Oh, no, but you're not praying. Oh, no, but you don't know the halachot. Oh, but you ate rafe. Okay, so what? What do you want? That I'm not going to continue? I'm doing tshuva. I'm sorry, I ate rafe. Okay, move on. What do you want? How can the Yetzirah fail you if you're not about to fail? If you don't plan to fall, no one can fail you. Okay, so you found yourself on the ground. So what's the next step? Okay, I'm going to stand up back on my legs. Oh, but 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 one leg is not working the, like like before. Okay, so I'm going to drag that leg and I'm going to continue no like that. Yeah, okay, today in this generation, you can drive. You don't need to walk. It's no problem. Really, it's not a problem because when you want, even you don't know what you're achieving while you're thinking about the Creator, while you're hoping for the Creator. A person can, uh, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said that a person, just by walking from one side of the room to the other in his house, he can revive the dead. He can give life to that person. Just by walking from one side of the room to the other. Can't you walk? Oh, you don't believe that you can achieve that. But, okay, Rabbi Nachman, what, you just wasting words. Why you told me that? Okay, to the righteous I understand why you said, because really they can revive the dead. Okay, but I'm also learning your Torah, Rabbi Nachman. So what, you wrote it with no reason? That I'm going to idolize the righteous people? No. You taught me that I can achieve those things. If the righteous people are telling you how powerful and how sweet and how precious and, and, and great is your soul, so why to ignore from why to ignore it? Why to ignore it? Why? Why not to believe in yourself? Really, it's an option. Start believing yourself. Oh, but I failed so many times. You want to hear the stories on Rabbi Akiva on the failures of Rabbi Akiva? You want to hear the stories on the failures of Rabbi Meir Baal Anes? You want to hear the stories on the failures of Abraham Avinu? Abraham Avinu, once he failed, you know what was his failure? Hashem Barach, the Creator, promised to him that he and his children are going to inherit the Holy Land. And Abraham Avinu asked him, can you give me an evidence for that? That was the failure of Abraham Avinu. It's a very small failure, right? What was the punishment on that? What he had to suffer because of that? A holocaust to all of his children for generations. More than 200 years, all of your seed, all of your family are going to go to Egypt. That was the result of that doubt of Avraham Avinu that just asked for an evident. Now the Creator is telling him, now I'm going to tell you how you're going to know. All of your children, they're going to go. The punishment was so horrible. They're going to have to go to the exile. They're going to be abused over there. They're going to work labor. They're going to suffer. They're going to be tortured over there. The kids will be thrown to the Nile to be eaten by, 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 by crocodiles, by... by a savage people will, will destroy your nation, your children, they're all going to suffer. And after so long, so many years, they will be redeemed and going to come back. Avraham Avinu, what happened to him? If I would hear that because of my mistakes, my children will suffer so much, I wouldn't have the power to deal with that. To think that you caused the Holocaust, that you send millions of people to hell, to suffering, because of your mistake? Who can deal with that? Avraham Avinu. Why? Is it written that he bought a bottle of vodka after that and went to drown his sorrow? No, it doesn't. He woke up in the next day like nothing happened. Immediately he made tshuva. Immediately he started over. Okay, that's what you want. Gam Zulatova. When Nahumish Gamzo went to, to Rome with a treasure full with diamonds to please the, the leader of, of, of the Roman army and, 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 and he, he, he found out that, that, that the thieves, robbers, stolen all of his diamonds. Now he didn't have how to bribe that, that emperor. He didn't have anything to, to offer him. And it was his mistake. 
because he was not watching over the diamonds, those good stones in the night when he was asleep. They stole it under his head, under his pillow when he was asleep. So it was his mistake. And that empire said, okay, now go execute them all. Go destroy them. Go we'll conquer Jerusalem. We're going to destroy the temple. That was a decree. What Nachumish Gamzu said on that? Gamzu Litova. It's all for the good. What? Death of thousands of people. It's a crazy decree now. All the soldiers, the Roman army are going now to destroy Jerusalem, to kill every innocent person you ever, you ever heard of. What he's got to say, the Gemara is praising him on that. It's not that he didn't care, but he realized that if Hashem Barak is doing it, even if it was my failure, what can I do if I failed? Okay, I failed. Can I do something to fix it except of tshuva and to try to, to, to benefit, to, to, to fix myself from now and on? Is there is something that I can do to fix my past except of tshuva? Except of coming back to Hashem Barak and admit, okay, Hashem, sorry, I killed him. Hashem, I'm sorry, I lost my money. Hashem, I'm sorry, I, I hurt her feelings. Hashem, what, can, what else can you do? Can you do? Nothing. I lost my house, I lost my children, I lost... Okay, can you do something with it except of coming back to Hashem? Nothing. So what's the will of the Creator? That you're going to shoot yourself in the head? No. That you're going to start over. And if you find yourself as a person that have that crazy power to start over again and again and again and again and you don't care what's going on with you, another knockout and you stand back on your leg, oh, who are you? Rocky Balboa, who are you? To stand up on your feet again and again and again like nothing can kill you? Yes. If you're going to look inside, you're going to see that no one can kill you. Look at you. How... How did you came here? How how you made it? How did you survive? Those crazy sadnesses, those crazy depressions, those crazy nights, those crazy drives, those crazy... You know where you've been. We know what we what we went through until today. With all of the scars, with all of the pain, with all of the sorrow, with all of this dark exile, and we're standing, and we're hoping, and we're praying, and we're going and doing it, but we all into the nights and talking to the Creator, and we want to start our lives again, like nothing happened, and please give me the power. Who are you? We must start recognizing the inner power of our souls. We are not simple at all. We're unique. We're special. We're so powerful. We're not regular at all. At all, at all not. Look at us. How we made it. Even to reach this level of today, just to be able to stand and to say, yes, that's me. To say, I tried. I did. I was. Just the fact that we did that, that we achieved that, to come to today and to be able to stand in front of the Creator is a huge success. A huge success. Something that is not simple at all. And with that power, like that Hashem said to Gidon, Lech bekochacha zevo shayet b'nei Israel miyad midyan. Go with that power of yours! With your power, not with mine! My power can just inspire you to use your powers because to be like me, you will never going to be like me. Nothing in the world will make you. Why? Because I'm walking in my own path and no one can walk in my path. No one in the world. The Creator, we're not going to make it. We're not going to do it. And it's not a bad thing because you have your own path and I, in the world, no chance. We're never going to walk in your path. I can tell you, you don't know what I went through, and you can answer to me, and you don't know what I've been through. And it's going to be the truth. And I was struggling in relationship with my wife, and I was struggling with the parents, and I was struggling with the financials, and I was struggling with myself, and with my... Yes, and you? Oh, everything was smooth for you? No, you were struggling. Do you know for sure that your tests were easier than mine? I know that mine were very hard, but I'm not sure that I was strong enough to deal with yours. I don't know that. 
And when I'm thinking about it, probably I wouldn't. I wouldn't make it. But you did. And you're standing here today with that holy desire to do and to achieve and to grow and to succeed. And you did something that I'm not able to do. You're able to deal with things that I was not able to deal with. So you achieved something that no one else in the world can achieve. And that is your power. And with that power that you need to recognize, that you need to believe in its importance, that you need to be inspired from yourself to see, wow, I made it. Big time, I achieved something big. I achieved something huge. I am who that I am. With all of what that I went through and I'm not denying the existence of the Creator. I do believe in Him. I want to come closer to Him. The darkness haven't turned me off. I'm still flaming. I'm still shining. No matter how, in which level, there is a spark here. Okay, you see a spark of light in the middle of the darkness. You can do something with it. When you're cold and suddenly you have one match, that's it. You've been redeemed. One match in the middle of the freezing cold in the forest, that's it. That's your redemption. You need one match. You need to find one good point inside of you and to nurture that, to support that, to recognize, to clean it and to work with it, to wash it, to hold it, to respect it, to put it in a nice fabric, something fancy, to love yourself. Because if you're not going to love yourself, how are you going to love others? You should love your friends like you love yourself. If you hate yourself, if you still blame yourself on all of your mistakes, you cannot go and understand others. You're going to criticize everyone, you're going to hate everyone, you're going to be afraid of everyone. Why? Because you're afraid of yourself, because you still don't know who you are. Who that you are is not your failures. <coughs> Those are your failures, it's not yourself. Who that you are, you are the desire for life that lives inside of you. You're the desire for good that exists inside of you. You are that in, 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 the eternal power, that holy desire, that flame of, of faith and trust in the Creator that lives inside of you. And even if it's small, you think that it's small because it's very covered, because it's almost sealed, but not because it's not exist, not because it's weak, because you cannot see the light. And the fact that you cannot see the light is only because you're distracted by the world. But if you're going to put your mind on finding yourself, on searching and finding yourself and looking into the roots of your own soul, you'll find over there a spring, an endless source of power, of pure energy that can shine the world and can redeem the world completely. Lech bekochacha zevo shayed ben Israel and redeem the nation of Israel. That that nation, who are they? What's the, what's the purpose of that nation? You're going to serve me like that the Kohanim were serving me in the days in the first and second temple, what they were doing over there. They were serving Am Israel. The Kohanim, the tribe of the, of, the, of the Levim, the Kohanim, they were serving Ben Israel. All of the rest of the tribes were coming to Beit HaMikdash and the Kohanim would serve them, would help them. And when the third temple, temple will be rebuilt, so what's going to happen? We, all of our nation, the nation of Israel, we're going to become to be what? Kohanim that are serving in Beit HaMikdash. Who are we going to serve over there? The nations. What are you going to do over there in Beit HaMikdash when you're going to serve? What are you going to do? You're going to open the gates for every person in the world that have that holy desire to come closer to the Creator and you're going to teach them and guide them how to do that. That's what you're going to do. You're not going to be a rabbi, you're not going to be righteous, you're not going to be pure. You're going to work. You're going to sweat. That's what you're going to do. That's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to serve in Beit HaMikdash. What are you going to serve? Who are you going to serve? You're going to serve the Creator. To do what? To make His name known and famous and great in the world. Between who? Between people. That everyone going to know Him, that everyone going to recognize Him, that everyone going to love Him, that everyone going to care about Him, that everyone going to know that they're important, that they, He cares about them, that they can also pray, that they can also talk, that they can also learn, that they have a soul. 
So he woke us up to be that that nation that will go and be light to the nations, to go and teach everyone. So you cannot teach them Torah, because Torah is not what they need to learn. Not because they're not allowed to learn Torah. No, they don't need to learn Torah. What they do need to, they need to believe. And faith you can go and teach. That's the first obligation that they have in the seven mitzvot of Nenoach. They must believe in one creator. Which creator? The God, Hashem, Elokei Israel, Melech. And His kingship rules the world. They need to believe in, the, in God. So they need to complete their faith. So they, in the level of faith, to have faith, need to have exactly the same faith as you. There's no difference. In faith, they need to have 100% faith, like you. And how far we are from faith. So how much we need to work? As much as we can. You also obligated in more many mitzvot. Great, do that. That's your share as a Jew. You're going to be rewarded. You can enjoy spending your life keeping Shabbat, eating kosher, putting tefillin, wearing tzitzit, covering your hair, wearing long sleeves, wearing a long dress. Wonderful things you can do. Afrashat halal, lighting candles in Shabbat. Amazing things that a person can do in his life. Great, do that. But you're on a mission. And we need to wake up to find that mission. And that mission is to bring down the light of the Creator to the world. And the way that we can bring it, it's not through signs in the streets. It's through the light of our souls. When you're going to find the light of the Creator that shines inside of you, and you're going to execute it, you're going to reveal it, you're going to do things with your talent to music, with your talent to writing, with your talent to sing, with your talent to dance, with your talent to teach, with your talent to go and, 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 and I don't know, to sell books, and, and, or to be a salesman, to, 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 to advertise, to do whatever, to, to be a programmer of, of, of the website emuna.com, whatever. You're going to use your talents, your real talents, what that God gave you for the purpose and not for money and not to avoid fears and not to run away from the purpose and not to hide over there and that everyone's going to leave you alone. Just you're going to have that motivation inside of you, that power, that energy to do the best that you can do, to use the powers, the wisdom, the talents, the gifts that you received from the Creator for the purpose. And you're going to stay a computer programmer, but you're going to put your heart and your mind into doing it for the Creator. And by doing that, you will meet thousands and thousands of people, millions of people that are going to be inspired from you. And they will never going to be like you. They will not going to imitate you. They will not going to admire you. They will just receive, will receive from you the power to be themselves like that you become to be yourself. Because you're not going to tell them that fake, that lie that is going on today that everyone are idolizing people. Oh no, the rabbi said, the rabbi said, the rabbi said, oh, I want to be like him. You see rabbis and students, it's a joke. You see people imitating their rabbis and following it. It's not real. It's a lie. You lost yourself to become to be like your rabbi. But your rabbi is unique. You love your rabbi because he's special, because there is no one like him, right? But you're also unique. Why you lost yourself to follow your rabbi? Follow him with your powers. Follow him with your talents. Follow him to become yourself, like that he became to be who that he is. He is fantastic. He is amazing. Why? Because he's himself. Because he found the Creator, he couldn't care less about what people will say. And he's going and doing his thing in the world, and he's ready to fight for that. Okay, so learn from him to be yourself. Like that Yitzchak, he learned from Abraham not how to be like Abraham. Abraham was serving Hashem in Barach all of his life in Midat HaChesed, in kindness. But Yitzchak, he was not going in kindness at all. He went with powers, he went with judgments, with Gvura. He was different than his father. So you say, okay, Yitzchak, he had his own powers, he was unique. Okay, great, let's see what with Yaakov. Yaakov, he had two people, two giants to admire. He had two options, they were both alive. He saw his father, he saw his grandfather. He could follow his grandfather and to be a man of, of kindness 
and he could go and, and admire and, 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 and idolize his father and to be a man of powers, of, of, of judgments. No, and he chose to go in, 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 in Tiferet. Tiferet, it, it, it's glory. He went with beauty and he went with songs and he went with his way of serving Hashem in Barach and he was straight and he was a man of truth and he chose to be himself because that's what he learned from his ancestors to be themselves and we should learn from them to be ourselves you will never going to be Avraham Avinu because you're not supposed to be Avraham Avinu you're supposed to be Yuda, Shmuel, Rochale, Simcha that's who you need to be you need to be that one that you are if God put his thought in creating you in a certain shape designed you and now that's the result who that you are so accept of taking it with two hands or nothing else to do. Because not to accept who that you are, it's not to accept the creation of the Creator. It's the worst thing that can be. That's far from faith. Not to accept the creation of the Creator, it's not to accept the Creator. It's to say he is wrong. He messed up. He failed. If you failed, so he failed. If you're a success, so he succeeded. We need to look for the beauty of the creation and that's the truth of the creation. What did God made? Look for God, look for Hashem inside of yourself. Come back to who that you are. Be yourself, your true self. When I started my tshuva, I was not looking to become religion. I did, religious, I couldn't, I, religious was I couldn't care less about it. It was nothing that I was desiring. But while I was searching, looking for myself, I thought about the fact that I am Jewish. And then I found out my Judaism. I just started thinking about my Judaism. But it was not the purpose of my search. It wasn't my task, my mission at all to find to be religious. No, no, not at all. I felt like I'm lying to myself, like I'm afraid for my own shadows, like I'm not complete with myself, like I'm all wrong, like I'm doing things against my own will, I'm not complete with myself. So I was looking for myself, my true self. That's what I was looking for. And I found it, many, many parts of myself I found inside Judaism. Great! That I need to wake up in the morning, that I want to pray and talk to the Creator, that I want to learn from His wisdom, that I want to keep the mitzvot, the Shabbos, I need that day of rest every week. Okay, I felt right keeping to all mitzvot, so I did. Only because that I felt inspired, only because of that love that woke up inside of me for to all mitzvot. But not because that I was obligated. I still don't feel obligated. I feel that I'm doing everything out of love. That's how really I am serving Hashem, out of love, because I love Him. You're going to ask me, well, you're not afraid? I don't know. Something is damaged. I don't know. I lost that. I'm not afraid of Him. I'm not. I just feel like I really want to keep His will. I really want to follow His advice. Like the Zara Kadosh is calling all to our mitzvot, 18 Tavin, good advice. It's a good advice. It's the best advice you can find. That's It's a, it's the best advice. But you can go to, 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 to a genius billionaire and you're going to go to him and he's going to tell you, hey, you need to put your money in the market and you don't know, you're going to make so much money and he starts talking to you and you lose him after a minute. <laughs> Why? Because he is a professional, he's a genius, he knows exactly what you need to do, what can be done with your money, he knows. But you, ignorant, you, don't, you never learned that profession, you don't know those numbers, those odds, where to invest, what you said, no, I need to write, and you don't know how to, what, 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 how you pronounce it, what you said, you don't know, you lost. So what you need to do, you need to speak with him again. Or you need to go and to find a middle man to explain, okay, look, I spoke with him, I, I, I don't know what he said. Like that when our nation came to receive the Torah, so after Hashem said, we died. We didn't have the power, the vessels to contain the light of Him speaking with us directly. So we asked for a middle man for Moshe Rabbeinu and he was standing and started explaining, Oh, thank you. Now we can hear. And we asked, please Hashem, let us 
hear you through Moshe. We're not able to handle your voice. It's too much. So even when you want to go and keep Torah and mitzvot, you don't need to jump to the deep, deeper, deepest water of them all. Okay, go swim with the sharks. No! First of all, shallow water. Learn how to move your hands a little bit. No, he's going to cross the ocean. No, that's not your first mission. The first mission is to get over your sadnesses, your depressions, your bad habits, you're, you're addicted to the things, you need to, to, to build yourself, to stabilize yourself, to come back to function, to come back to order. You cannot jump to, to, to the highest floors of them all before you know how to walk. First of all, you need to learn how to crawl, how to say thank you, Hashem, how to speak with Hashem. I'm learning from Mitzvah Tatfilah, from the fact that we need to pray, I'm learning to talk to the Creator. Beyond, beyond and before of the prayer, of the written prayer, I'm talking to Him. I'm saying to Him, good morning, how are you doing? How was your night? How was your day? I'm really, that's what I'm, that's part of my prayer to Hashem. A few days ago I asked him, how was your day? I'm, I'm sure that no one asked him that question. <laughs> And I'm sure that you enjoyed that question. How was your day, Hashem? How was your day? I hope your children are, are, are okay, making you happy. Because, really? I don't know. Do I know if he's completely happy or maybe he's disappointed? Maybe he's, I don't know, maybe need some help. Hashem, is there something I can do for, do for you? What can I do for you? Is there anything I can do for you? The Baal Shem Tov was praising his daughter, Odell. On, on, on her on, 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 on her being so important in, in, in heaven and when they ask what was so great in her in that righteous woman Odell, the daughter of Baal Shem Tov so, so the, they said I'm not sure if it was the Baal Shem Tov that said it or if it was Rabbi Nachman of Breslev that said I think that it was Rabbi Nachman of Breslev that said that she was always asking Hashem Barach, what else can I do for you what else I can do for you she was always looking for, what can I do for you, Hashem? Okay, now what can I do for you, Hashem? That holy desire just to want to, okay, Hashem, I'm here, I'm, I'm here for you. What can I do for you, Hashem? What can I do for you? And now, if you see that it's beyond your powers and it, it pushed you to sadness, so you took too much in yourself, okay, so relax. So go, eat a burger, eat something good that will relax you. Okay, come back to yourself. Okay, say to Hashem, well, I took too much on myself. Six hours, it's too much. Eight hours, it's too much. Okay, I'll start with ten minutes. Ten minutes, I can I can deal with ten minutes. Okay, so learn ten minutes. So pray ten minutes. So 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 start to take too much on yourself in the beginning. It it, it can be worse than the, the the most lethal poison. Like it, it, after a few years, after three years, you can ask, what am I doing here? I, I put myself in prison, I'm so obligated, it's so heavy, it's crazy yoke, it's not for me, what am I doing here, I know, I want to run away. And, and you see people falling from their tshuva. It means that they were wrong already from the beginning. The yearning were good, the desire was good, but you must be aware to the fact that you don't have vessels, that you cannot contain, that it's too much for you. So we need to work slowly, slowly. First of all, to start with the simplicity of faith, to say, Hi. Hi, Hashem. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you for waking me up. Oh, it's, it's so great to just to be, to know that I can eat with you, Hashem, and that I can think of you while I'm eating. Thank you, Hashem, for letting me eat. Okay. And then you're going to hear someone will come to you and will tell you, Hey, you know, you need to wash before you... Okay. Oh, thank you, Hashem. I, I'm going to wash. You know how many mistakes I was doing while learning to all mitzvot? I never learned. My school, whether I was secular, completely secular. I didn't know anything. I didn't know halachot at all. I didn't know the meaning of the word Mishnah, the meaning of the word Gemara. I didn't know, like that ma many of you probably also didn't know. I didn't know those words, that what it means, Mishnah, Gemara, Tanaim, Amoraim, Gemara. What? 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 what are you talking about? Zohar. I didn't know those classes. It, it wasn't familiar. It wasn't in my in my dictionary. I didn't know those words at all. Never. Never heard about it. In school we learned something that calls Toshba. 
Toshba. What it means Toshba? Torah Shebaal Peh. The wisdom that been given to the wise by heart, from one mouth to the ear, to one mouth, to the, to, from one generation to the next. But they shortcut the words. They didn't say Torah Shebaal Peh, where to, wisdom that been given, Torah that been given from one righteous to the other. They didn't say that. They called. They cut it. Cut the, the first letters, and they called it Toshba. And that what the, and and we learned Toshba. We didn't know what it means Toshba. We didn't know what we're learning at all. Toshba. We learned Toshba. What's that Toshba? No one knew. No one student in the class knew. Okay, verses. Okay, sentences. Okay, words of people from ancient generations. Okay, when is the break? Oh, twenty minutes. Okay, you can sit for another twenty minutes to hear those words from the teacher. Oh, it's not. It will. And when I wanted to learn, so I just wanted to learn more, and I wanted to learn more. And when you want, so you develop, and you grow, and then you hear another halakha, and you hear another class that pulls another, brings, um, pours a lot of light on your life, and wow, suddenly, oh, now I got it, oh, now I understand it, oh, thank you Hashem. And then you grow, and you progress, and you develop, and you succeed, and you achieve. But for that, you need to believe in yourself, to believe that you're important in the eyes of the Creator, even if you're so poor, even if you're so weak, even if you're not learning enough. Who said that you're not learning enough? Some rabbi, some other lecture that you heard? Okay, but you, do you have really the vessels to learn more? Do you know for sure, for a fact, that you're able to learn more and it won't be too much for you? I remember myself in the beginning of my tshuva, I wanted to learn and I went to yeshivot and my wife, she suffered from that. It hurt her. It really hurt her. And what you're going to say now that I was not learning with the right intention? My intention was the purest intention that I could find in myself. I just wanted to learn Torah. What else I wanted? But I didn't know anything about Shlom Bayit and my wife, she wanted me to be close to her and that we're going to spend time. Can't you understand her? A woman that just been married? No, her husband now decided to go to yeshiva. What the hell is going on? Are you crazy? <laughs> Destroyed my life now. That's what you're bringing home? I thought more about chocolate, flowers, you know, let's go for a trip, let's go for a walk, or what's it? No, listen. Reality, face reality, deal with the truth. You want her to yearn to learn sugiot from Masechet Beitzah? Where, where, where is your logic? Where is your mind? There's no way. Forget about it. It's not her. Maybe in seven years, maybe after talking about it, really sharing with her, sitting into the night and talking. <laughs> and of course, don't drain her. Don't break her mind. No, you must listen. She's going to run away. Really, she doesn't have that desire. She doesn't have those yearning to, no, we must. What are you talking about? I want to go to the mall. Are you crazy? Really, you need to understand. There is a human being sits right in front of you. And we need to understand that. And if your wife, she's not able to receive so much, maybe it's Hashem Barach telling you that you're taking too much in yourself. Maybe Hashem is using someone now to hint you that you need to relax, that you need to come back to the beginning, to start again, to restart, to go and ask Hashem, please help me to learn Torah, and not to think that you can learn Torah. Maybe you need to ask and to prepare yourself to the learning and to pur purify to the, yourself to the learning and to wash yourself for the learning and to cleanse yourself for the learning. Maybe the learning is not such a simple thing that it's just, oh yeah, I'm sitting for four hours and learning. Maybe you're, not, maybe you're destroying more than you're building. Maybe you can destroy while learning Torah. The Torah itself is testifying. It's written, That if you have the merit, you purified yourself enough, so the Torah becomes to be a potion, a cure for you, will heal you. But if not, Lo Zacha haven't purified himself enough, he doesn't have the merit yet to learn Torah, so it's poison, it's lethal for you, it can kill you. What? The same verses, Torah, Bereshit, Chumash, what am I doing? Rashi, it can kill you. Yeah, it can kill you. You know what you're dealing with? It's a fire, it's the wisdom of Hashem Yidbarach. It's, it's in the head of the Creator. It's not in the, in the heels of the Creator. It's not the lowest level of the Creator that for sure, that's also something that we cannot reach, cannot understand. 
You're talking about his wisdom. You're talking about his wisdom. His power. Okay, now I want that. Okay, I see your point. <laughs> it's going to take a while. You need to breathe. You need to relax. Abali Tahir, the one that comes to purify, they tell him to wait. That's what they're telling him, you need to wait. Okay, you need to count the days, you need to go to the mikveh, you need to purify, you need to work on your middle, you need to relax, you need to have faith. Faith is patience. The explanation to the word faith is patience, that you can wait. Wait forever if needed. Wait. I'm here, I'm waiting for you Hashem. If you will wait for Hashem, Hashem will wait for you. If your urge and your desire to complete and to achieve, no, but I must. So you, you're, you're looking for your own success, you're not looking for Hashem. If Hashem told you to wait, you're going to wait. You should wait. If you're waiting for Hashem, your wife, you're waiting for your wife, she tells you, okay, wait, you're going to wait. If she is your wife and you decided, students of mine, they told me, I went to a shidduch, I want to get married. And she told me that if I want to get married, it's going to take one year and a half. She can't marry before one year and a half from now. I told him, okay, she asked you, do you want to marry me or not? That's the question here. What should I do? What should you do? You should tell me if it's your wife or not. If it's your wife, you're waiting. If it's your wife, there's no question here. And if it's not your wife, also there's no question. <laughs> Just this, is it your wife or not? If it's your wife, you're waiting. If it's not your wife, you're, you don't need to ask the Rav. <laughs> is it your wife? If you don't know, so how can you go and get married with someone that you don't know if it's your wife or not? Are you crazy to go and marry someone that you're not sure if she's your wife or not? <laughs> crazy. People don't use their mind, don't use their head. No, but what I'm going to do is she tell... You don't go to find your wife. You don't go and find a good shidduch. You go, who are you going to look for? A good shidduch? What, do you mean? what does it mean a good shidduch? Are you marry her family? <coughs> are you married? Someone gonna let you touch the money, someone gonna they, for, you're gonna sign the document. If there is money over there, for sure you're gonna sign. <laughs> so what do you want? <laughs> anyway, there is no money over there. Honor for sure you're not gonna receive. So <laughs> deal with reality. If it's your wife, so yes, wait and forever. Wait seventy years. If it's your wife, if it's your soulmate. And you can also talk to her right now. Okay, so oh, well, now you need to work on your midot, or you have desire, you have lust, you have weaknesses. Okay, great, it's time to work on yourself. You want to work after the wedding? That's for sure. I promised hell. It's the best gift in the world that you can work on yourself now before the wedding. After the wedding, to start work on yourself? It's no good. A disaster. So it's a gift. Right? The waiting is the preparation. That's how you purify yourself. That's how you cleanse yourself. That's how you build the vessels to contain the bounty that will come. Usually when you say yes to one year and a half, you're going to get married after three months. Usually after you say to Hashem, I'm going to wait for you forever, then you see Hashem. But you need to, read, to be ready like Abraham Avinu. He said to Hashem, Hashem told him, you need to sacrifice Yitzchak. When he said, okay, I'm doing it, then Hashem told him, no, no, you don't need to do it. No. I never said it. I said, I want you to say yes. Hashem told him, bring Yitzchak. He didn't tell him, kill Yitzchak. He, said, he never said, kill him. He said, you need to bring him to the mountain. You need to be ready to sacrifice him. Okay, when you were ready, it was enough. Usually it's enough. You don't need to do. You just need to really do. He was ready, so he wasn't supposed to kill him. You're going to find the treasures only when you're going to start looking for them really with your heart. Then you're going to find the purpose and the meaning. And it's available. And lo rechokai, it's not far away from you. Not mever layam, not across the sea, not beyond the higher, highest mountains. Not, no. Beficha ubilvavcha lasato. It's in your mouth and in your heart to do that, to keep it. So you need to start listening to yourself, to your heart. And to start talking, to hear your prayers, and to listen to who that you are. Because they, what they do, the simple prayer, the conversation with the Creator, is waking us up to our self-awareness. That's the biggest, strongest tool that we have to find who that we are, is through that prayer. 
simple prayer, a conversation with the Creator, a conversation with yourself, with your soul. That's the strongest tool to develop a self-awareness, to know who you are. Because nafshi it's abed the spirit comes out when you talk. Now that I talked to you, you heard me, you know a little bit who I am. If I would stand for a whole hour and wouldn't say a word, you wouldn't know anything. You wouldn't know who I am. If I'm nice, if I'm not, if I'm wise, if I'm, you wouldn't know anything. Only after you heard me talking, you can, okay. But about yourself, it's the same. A person can cross 50, 70, 80 years of his life and not to know who he is because he's hiding himself, because he's always afraid and he's denying and he's struggling and should I tell, shouldn't I tell, what if I'm going to... And then he cannot express himself. First layers of expressing yourself, I'm sorry to say, for, sorry for the expression, you're going to ex... you're going to express... you're going to ex... Uh, no? Express? No. Yourself. Express, yes, express. You're going to... yes, thank you. You're going to express your garbage, you're going to express your, your, your foreign thoughts, your nonsense, your fears, your, your stress, your anger, that's what you're going to express. In the beginning you're going to express your sadnesses, your, your fears, your anxieties, that's what you're going to express in the beginning. But after you're going to get rid of those layers of fears, then you're going to start to express your true self, who that you really are, under those layers of fears under all of those husks and, 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 and coverings of who that you are. And then your soul will start shining after you're going to peel and going to reveal. First of all, you need to throw away all of the garbage. And then, suddenly you're going to find yourself. Already in the beginning, you're going to be relief, but maybe a little bit stressed. Oh, what? I'm such a ah, I'm so bad. Why? I'm so terrified. Why? I'm, such a, I'm in such a big, big, big craziness, I'm so crazy, it's going to be okay. After you're going to get used to that, to, to take your way, to, to get rid of all of your fears and your stress, and you're going to start praying and asking for Hashem for salvations, you're going to meet yourself, you're going to find yourself. And then when you're going to recognize your true self, true self, you should know that in that day you completed your tshuva. You came back already. And then you need to believe in the power of tshuva, to understand how huge was the power of prayer that brought you to find yourself. And then when you found yourself, if you will just hold to that, you're righteous. You are the light of your soul and the physicality is not holding you back anymore because you are who that you are and you're righteous. Because your nation are all righteous. That's complete tshuva. That's a complete shiva, that you reached your soul, and that's it. And there are no coverings anymore, because your soul is the light of Hashem, light of the Creator. And if it shines through you, that's it. You brought Him down to the world. You delivered the Creator to the world. You revealed His light to the nations, to the world. Thank you very much. Be blessed. If I can please help you, to help me, to help the world, to help Hashem. We gave you those wonderful envelopes. Inside of them, there is a small paper postcard for everyone. If you can help us, we're reaching out to thousands and thousands of people on a daily basis through our website, emuna.com, emunachannel.com. We're broadcasting Facebook and Facebook Live, YouTube, SoundCloud, Twitter, whatever. We're using every tool that, uh, that, that, that God gave us until today and every, every support and every help that, that you can help for us, can help us, is saving lives of people. Today I'm giving this class here in Atlanta only because of the merit of those people that helped us, that were supporting us, that gave us money to help us to buy the tickets and to make this tour happen. And, People are working hours and hours and, and, and really giving all of their hearts for that purpose. And only those souls of, of, of crazy, lunatic, truth seekers like me are joining me in my mission to go and, and redeem the world. So please join us and give as much as you can, even a little bit. And we have pens. Everyone that uh, can help us, even with a small donation, it doesn't need to be much. 
everything that you can do is immediately bringing us to more houses, to more families, to more people. And thank God Hashem blessed us and gave us that gift to really to wake up people. There's a woman that made Aliyah just maybe two weeks ago from, from, from Hollywood, Miami. And, uh, and one city that she heard of the classes with music that we made just took her life to a different direction. She was into business, she was divorced with a child and suffering and whatever. And that CD, she said, I heard that CD hundreds of times. And just, and so just please help us to help others. And uh, that light will come back into, into your lives, the merit of, 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 of charity. It's a huge merit. It's a... Uh, the catechism of it, charity is saving from death. So, small amounts will save squirrels and porcupines, and big amounts will save uh, <laughs> real human beings. May Hashem bless you all in happiness and success. And uh, we will see with our healthy eyes the redemption and complete salvation of our nation. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much.